Welcome to Auto Review with Thomas, today with a special treat of the Volkswagen Touareg. This one is first of all the new V8, then it is the sporty look R-Line and also the so-called 1 million special edition. You can see it here already maybe a little bit with a lot of dark accentuations. So dark, sporty maybe, powerful. So let's find out more about that in exterior interior and the driving experience in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front, this new Touareg generation here, you can see the very strong front grille has become a little bit sportier. The R-Line even sportier as for the lower grille, for example, chrome accentuation right there, R-Line badge and also here horizontal fins in black. And this special 1 million edition refers to 1 million built Touaregs overall, of course, in all generation. You can see here tinted background for the headlamps, so a very dark and more aggressive look corresponding also then here to the black color for today. Daytime running lights and the main unit comes standard with LED, optional than the Matrix LED. 4 meters 87, 16 foot or 192 inches is the length of the Touareg 3. 18 to 21 inch wheels are the sizes. These are the biggest ones, 21 inch. Usually, for example, the V8 also comes with 19 as standard. Then you can upgrade and the special edition also adds some special styles here also in a darker tone. This one being also the R-Line, you get a special R-Line badge here. We have contrasting mirror caps for the day. And in this case also, you can see the wheel arches are painted in vehicle color. And it's also a little bit wider in the rear here for the wheel arch. So a special, you know, stronger stance. Also with the one million badge right there for this special edition. Overall, the styling is rather conservative on the Volkswagen Touareg. It stays true to its original form, but a little bit sporty in this generation, for example, also with a more accentuated kink right there and also this additional wing. The design line, main one, you can see here above the door handles and in this beautiful evening light, you can see how it divides a little bit in light and shadow. But overall, I think a rather simplistic design, but simplistic designs are usually also quite beautiful. Or what do you think? By the way, ground clearance with the air suspension, you can pump it up, <laughs> pump it up your, to about 26 centimeters of ground clearance. That's four centimeters less than in the previous generation. And now 26 centimeters or about 10 inch, but that is actually still quite massive if you want to do some off-roading. There's also an off-road pack available. No, you know, separate gearbox then for that. However, you can still get some, you know, underskin cover, for example, underbody cover and, um, you know, some other features. So some off-road use still possible. We also have a special off-road episode. You can tune into that. I think the rear is really where most things happened here with the new Volkswagen Touareg generation, especially more modern tail lamps and also horizontal way. This looks more sporting, also more seamlessly designed. The exhausts here are real, by the way. They are, of course, a little bit wider on the outside, but the real ones are on the inside each for this V8 and the big Touareg lettering. And also new technologies for this generation, of course. The rear axle steering is really great step forward. You can get five degrees, you know, across the steering from the rear wheels then at lower speeds, one meters reduction of turning circle, for example, then parallel steering at higher speeds. That's pretty cool. And also an anti-tilt control. So this anti-roll control. So the car is being kept more upright while driving, especially if you drive a little bit faster with the bigger engine here. And here we go with the engine part for the Touareg. There is in some markets a 2.0-liter TSI available, but the major engine is either 3.0-liter V6 petrol with 340 horsepower or the 3.0-liter V6 TDI with 231 or 286 horsepower. And then here the new 4.0-liter V8 bi-turbo diesel with 421 horsepower 
4.9 seconds is the acceleration figure that's a second faster than the other engines and there will also be soon in Touareg R a 3 liter V6 hybrid with 462 horsepower that to come later today about the big diesel and by the way all-wheel drive distribution either 40% in the front 60% in the rear the air standard or then adaptive a little bit changeable also so the maximum is either 20% in the front 80% in the rear or 70% in the front and 30% in the rear so that's how it can change on the maximum level Now to the interior, you can see here all the ambient lighting at the inside of the doors, a lot of black piano lacquer. It looks fancy at first sight, but then when you catch some fingerprints and dust, hmm. here a special edition also with the quilted structure, also another one million entry batch, always especially with this low door sill. This is, um, you know, bringing some more entry comfort, aluminum paddles, then again more ambient lighting, setting to blue. You can still get some analog instruments from base Tourex, but these are the new digital instruments and also Form 1 screen unit, so to say, of course, there are two screens with the bigger infotainment system, two sizes available, so more deals for that. Yeah, this is a normal golf steering wheel. I wish the Tourex had a more sophisticated steering wheel that doesn't fit to the rest of the pricey vehicle. At least 60K, so it's not the most expensive SUV you can get. Oh, but of course in this V8 version rather 80k plus then of course so 80k the base price for the V8 80k euros so here are the seats also with a special edition form sadly only animal skin seats here for the V8 or for the special edition of course better is when you go for the fabric seats available in Europe some European or in German market as base for the Touareg and they adapt more to the body are more comfortable are uh, actually cooler in summer and warmer in winter and of course no animals are being harmed then so if available you should go for the fabric seats and it also shows that Volkswagen is still living in the past in some areas. Let's get inside so easy to get inside this very low sill as a very good entry into the vehicle and you sit upright it's so comfortable if I turn on the ignition by the way and would also close the door then also the seat is going forward a little bit, so that's this um, comfort feature. It's also seen here with the steering wheel, it comes up or down, this directly with the ignition. And then in the seat forward, then when I close the door, with the one meters 86 or 6 with 1, you still have enough headroom, even though when you have this optional panoramic roof, pretty nice. And again, so comfortable from the seating form actually, it's very open and of course very well adjustable. You can put it even a little bit more down and all electric seat control right here and you know to me definitely one of the most comfortable vehicles oh and by the way we have the magic soft close function here Ta-da! welcome to this interior here with soft touch top part copper contrast stitches then you can see here the beautiful ambient lighting already that's very well done so a nice styling overall it usually comes as standard standard you know, the base Touareg, still analog instruments, an optional 12 inch screen on the left, and here 9.2 inch on the right and 15 inch on the right optional. So this is the maximum setup, 12 inch plus 15 inch. The smaller infotainment screen on the right is easier to use. It's the one you maybe know from the Golf 7 facelift or so, this more sophisticated, I'll soon tell you more about that. It looks more fancy, of course. Other than that, Steering wheel taken from a normal Golf, as I said. Um, yeah, I think it should have a special one. However, left side here, cruise control or volume settings. Right side for controlling the screen in the middle or jumping the music titles. Then in the middle, interesting here, um, there's either this, you know, Pino Lecker closing or you open it with the inductive charging pad for your smartphone or USB-A device charger. Then have the cup holders. They are very good in the quality as well massive shifting lever then you have a volume jog here still with a nice sound as well it's good to have that and then 
two dials. Here either for the driving modes, also off-road driving mode to reduce the stability control and so on. And on the right side for the air suspension to put it up or put it down manually, but it also happens according to the speed. And when you push the middle armrest up, you have more space underneath with another USB-A charger. Well, and then this huge middle screen, you have this main menu, so to say. This is one you have. And sometimes you have to search for things. For example, settings is more like, you know, language and units and stuff. And then you have another hotkey in the lower part where you have, let's say, another main menu. You can also, yeah, that's the Apple CarPlay. Um, you can also use the gesture function. Sometimes it's work better, sometimes it's not. You also can use one finger or two fingers. So two fingers to go for the bigger screen change and then one finger for the smaller screens here. It's a little bit complicated to control, I think. The map, of course, is very impressive when you are, especially when you're here, full screen like this. The climate unit always stays like this in the lower part, or you can change like this. Seat cooling and seat heating can be activated at the same time as well, so that's possible. But to control it while driving, hmm, not that good. And voice commands, by the way, is not free speech command, but you know, fixed commands, you have to repeat them, which show up in the menu here. Hmm. I don't know. Not my favorite. And sometimes you really have to search in the menu. For example, here there's this vehicle menu. You can have an off-road view, for example. Then you can go to settings. And then, for example, you have here the background lighting settings. Then change the color um, to whatever you want to have. That's pretty fancy. I always have them you know, fully powered up, of course. And on Thomas Blue, here we go. And the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is also possible to see here, not full integration, but I think it's big enough. And the beautiful sound, by the way, from this sound system, good 3D surround sound. Um, recommend you to check out this tune later on as well. And, well, really happy with the sound system, pretty cool sound. Yeah, that's really nice. We'll listen more to that later on. So you have to learn this infotainment system before a little bit then you get along but using it while driving is i think a no-go then we go with this very fancy rear view camera good resolution and you have the drone view from above here in the top trim and also the rear view camera at the same time digital instruments they are very well usable you can also switch the content for example have a gps map in there and then also have it all the way over the screen that's probably the best use for this one and then you can also zoom in and out with your right thumb on the steering wheel and have well, you know, whatever you want to have in the middle there. There's also, by the way, the night vision available. And I'm gonna turn off on the real light for that. So here we go. And then we have this night vision. And if you have used this as a customer, I would really like to know if you find that useful or is it just distracting while driving at night? I'm not so really sure about that. A very clear head-up display for the current speed, a loud speed, also assistance systems info, or then also GPS info when you have a route running. Now to the rear, yes, the driver's seat is in the forward position as for this comfort closing or comfort you know, moving feature and there's plenty of legroom still left. And also very upright seating position here. You can adjust the rear part of the seat here if you want more upright or more sleeping position. You can also move this bench 16 centimeters forward or backward, depending on if you want a longer trunk area or want maximum legroom here, that's pretty cool. And also headroom, still enough, when it's 1 meters 86 or 6 with 1. Even though, again, panoramic roof, without the panoramic roof, you would have more headroom, but then again, you also have a nice view to the front. So this rear area is so super comfortable. To me, also one of the most comfortable rear areas, definitely. Also soft touch at the inside of the doors. You have then here these manual shades for the inside and isofix on the outside each then cup holders but not adaptive right there you can by the way also just fold the middle part here as a ski hash and then there's an extensive option of course four zone SE together also with seat heating for the rear and lowest part two more USB sub supplies and a real power supply for example for charging your laptop that's fancy so let's open that trunk area and it's very well usable look at that and putting some luggage inside you can see the dimensions approximately of course you can also put it like this 
that still fits and this cover here automatically moves down and up is a very good uh, solution for that like it and on the right side here you can also put out the automatic towing hook and you can also lower the vehicle here with the air suspension for easier loading and then let's take some measurements here about a meter in length and also a little bit more than a meter in width that's pretty cool you can flip the seats from here and here very good mechanism and then you push them a little bit forward either with the luggage you put inside or then from the rear like this they are also then fixed in this position here we go and that's it and i mean this is very well usable and to the front seat as I would be driving you have almost 190 in meters then and the height here to the cover below that right there is about 45 centimeters and to the very top you can of course also remove the cover it's almost 80 centimeters and ever want about the two closing buttons here immediately electric hatch close and on the right side you click it it beeps and then you actually have to move away from the vehicle. And when you do that, then the hatch is closing. Here we go. Welcome brothers and sisters to this driving part here with the Touareg V8. And we talk in general about the features of the Touareg and then of course difference driven all the different engines so far you know the v8 then we had the v6 diesel and also the v6 petrol and later on of course there will be in the next review of the tour rack that will be coming up we'll also take a look at the r version with the plug-in hybrid that then at the later stage so what about the tour rack in general of course you have this you know supreme high suv seating feeling and the cool thing is it's still a somewhat easy to control car so you don't feel overwhelmed you feel like you are pretty much in control all the time that's good and it's besides you know of this huge infotainment screen which you can also get then and again in the smaller size everything else is really easy to control and also how to ease the car around there's hardly any car of that size that is so easy to move around especially if you have this optional rear axle steering because you know it reduces the turning circle for about a meter then you're more agile in the you know, low speed areas and more stability than the higher speed areas again rear axle or rear wheels going across or opposite direction the front wheels lower speed and same direction and at higher speeds definitely very helpful for this vehicle we do have the 21 inch wheels mounted here today and they are not good for the comfort of course they are very good for the looks the v8 usually comes with 19 inch as a standard and then this special edition here adds some wheels in 20 or 21 inch in special designs yeah i would rather stick with the smaller wheels because even though they look kind of kick-ass they really reduce the comfort so usually the torque is wow what a soft air carpet ride and how cool is the air suspension and so on and when you then mount the 21 inch wheels and you drive you know over some potholes or here you know the uh, sewage system covers being like oh that's bumpy wait a minute which car am i sitting in so yeah be aware of that definitely um, of course you can always pick different driving modes here and so on this will also have an effect so um, when you are in the normal mode the air suspension is definitely softer or in the comfort mode in the sports mode for example the air suspension stiffens up also lowers the car a little bit also lowers the car when you're driving higher speeds by the way and in off-road of course it puts the car, car higher so to what i mentioned earlier 26 centimeters of ground clearance or about 10 inches of ground clearance which is still quite decent but usually i'm driving in the comfort mode and the air suspension is rather doing a good job but it's doing an even better job in combination with the 19 inch wheels or at least the 20 inch ones so 
And Touareg to me is one of the best travel vehicles. It's so super comfortable to sit in. The seating position is very, let's say, neutral. You have very wide open seats. Would of course be even more comfortable in the base fabric seats because a fabric surface is even better as for you know adapting to your body the animal skin surfaces and even also the red surfaces they are always stiffer so to say you know from the from the surface material and yeah a little bit of pity that we do have just the Golf 7 steering wheel here which I've been using for so many different vehicles and I really like to have you know a more exclusive steering wheel in a so exclusive car these caddy vehicles I call them you always have to watch out so many times they put speed cameras in there, like mobile speed cameras in there. Of course, we are never driving faster than allowed anywhere, right? Right? <laughs> so we head out to the motorway. And the thing is here, you can go to sports mode, which is already affecting things, suspension, shifting, engine, throttle input, and so on. But you can always leave suspension on comfort, for example, and switch from the D driving mode to the S driving mode and you just pull back the lever and it switches here D, S, D, S <laughs> like Homer Simpson, you know, like D, S, D, S <laughs> yeah and so we go to the S when we head out to the motorway now and to show something of the acceleration we can also go to the sports mode at the same time when I oh the new Peugeot 208 also see that preview on how to go through, of course pretty cool visualization right there and with this V8 you have the best power less than five seconds is the acceleration figure and now we have some 50 to 80 let's go well, and that's it already that was already 90 um, almost um, so you see pretty much power and even have a decent sound so for a diesel actually a quite nice sound as well and I mean this acceleration thing, not sure how often you will do that here with the Touareg. It would rather be something that you use this car for towing, 3.5 tons, maximum towing capacity. And indeed Volkswagen did a survey and asked the existing Touareg customers, especially the ones with the big engines, like how many of you are really using towing equipment? And actually the majority of them said, yeah, we do. You know, like horses, boats, 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 <laughs> or whatever, you know, um, motocross bikes, I don't know. Um, and that's, you know, that's the thing also where, where stronger engines are also being requested, that you still you know, have a decent acceleration also when you tow something and the car doesn't feel weak when going uphill and so on and so on. Yeah, the weaker, weaker engines here, the V6 diesel or the V6 petrol will just be fine for that too. Definitely, yes. And you know, sometimes you want a little bit more power. That's why it's there. So we're going back to the normal mode. And one thing I have been criticizing with the new Touareg generation is the lane keeping assist. So I'll put it now to 80 kilometers an hour. And lane keeping assist is also online. Um, let's see if the yellow lines are being recognized here in the construction side. seems good so I, I'm not steering you know I'm just holding on to the steering wheel because that's how it's supposed to be now yellow line on one side white line on the other side yeah so that's a big improvement so um, there was a software update major software but now lane keys keeping please take over steering um, so it's not capacitive yet here as in the Passat facelift or in the um, all new Volkswagen Golf so you need to turn actually something with the steering wheel, not just realized by holding tight. So the first versions of the lane keeping assist here were like, I mean, it was almost impossible to drive with it on a, on a motorway because it was so unnatural in the steering feeling and you feel like, what is the car doing here? But now the process has been, like us say, soothened. So it's a more smooth process. I'm sure if I want to rely like, on the car on that, I would rather do that, <laughs> but you know myself. So now getting white to white lines. Let's see what the car does here. So 
Now also traffic sign recognition shows me in the digital instruments and in the head-up display. 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, car is accelerating to that. And here the car is being kept in the lane. And again, before that it was like, bup, 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 bup. <laughs> like always some weird movements. And see here, really slow and smooth mo movements. Here's also the blind spot monitor, perfectly integrated in the side mirror. That's really good, great feature. And when I also hit the turning indicator, it's flashing even more to show me. During that, I was giving up the lane. I think the, you know, probably then the lane assist is saying like, okay, when the indicator is going, I, I won't keep on to that, you know. Is that the case? Let's, let's try it again. So when I now, well, let's say, yeah, that's the case actually, yeah. I mean, it also makes sense, definitely, why not? So getting off now, and the car is still quite heavy, definitely with this big diesel, but brakes are very well in, you know, let's say dosage, so you can very, very finely tune them with your throttle. You have a good feeling for the car, you know, so the brake pedal gives you a good connected feeling. That's really nice. Now we head onto the part where we really floor the car out. Once again, I'll put it also to the sports mode and also, in this case, the sports shifting is up automatically being activated. Let's see how that one plays out. It's the most powerful engine for this vehicle, so, um, you know, that's the reason why we do that. So, we are going again to about 50 kilometers an hour and just see how far it goes. Also, how stable the car is at real high speeds because we can do that here in Germany. So, let's go. That's 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles per hour, and I mean, you hear that I don't have to raise my voice that much, although it's an SUV here, so we're really pushing against the wind, and the car is remaining very stable. Here now, with the higher speeds and the lane keeping assist, um, the steering wheel tends to feel a little bit loose. Suspension-wise, the stiffer air suspension and in sports mode keeps the car, you know, um, really very well balanced that's cool um, so now I deactivate the ACC and then I also feel I would have more control I can also deactivate the lane assist completely here in the middle menu and that's actually good and easy to reach when you press the button here and then here the right okay because sometimes you might feel like yeah I'm a little bit annoyed by this one now so I just want to drive myself and then you can actually do that or some sirens going like oh is the police coming for us did nothing but was you know just doing things that are allowed <laughs> so actually I shouldn't be afraid of the police coming right unless I have done something else <laughs> no of course not how would I so now I we going into the tunnel and yes, of course, Thomas Blue ambient lighting. Look at that ambient lighting here, beautifully done right there all over the vehicle. I always push it maximum volume uh, from, the, from the brightness. Because it's just fancy, right? Cool, right? So I really love that. Awesome stuff. Really great to look at. And what do you think about the sound of the V8 diesel, by the way? I think it was quite acceptable, wasn't it? So, yeah. And again here, you can easily switch then to a comfort mode back again. Just enjoy the cruise riding here. And I mean, the stronger acceleration of the V8 is one thing. The towing is probably more, more important thing. And to me actually, you now going for bigger engines doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, I always want the fast acceleration. On the other hand, it also gives you some more calmness because you can keep the car in lower RPM regions. Mm, yeah, I mean, you can argue for that or not. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's like pro and con. Of course, the base price is way higher. That's, of, that's definitely a con. 
do I really need this V8 with the Touareg by turbo diesel? Hmm. I mean, to me, the um, you know for the Touareg and also for the Audi Q8, for example, I really like this V6 petrol engine. I think it gives some kind of good compromise. You have a six-cylinder petrol engine. Um, you don't need to floor it out all the way. It's also not that inefficient. The most efficient engine for this car would be the V6 diesel, which we could easily drive with about 8 liters on 1 kilometer, so that's about 29 mpg US, 35 mpg UK. Here now, for this diesel, yeah, of course, we did you know, some, some strong acceleration now and so on, so we can rate this fuel economy here yet, which would be, you know, just under 12 liters on 1 kilometers. So if you hammer the car, that's what you will get. So the question is rather, you know, what do you get when you, you know, just drive in a cruising way, calm and so on. So what's then the real realistic versus figure versus the V6 diesel? Well, let me find it out. Let me cruise a little bit here on the motorway without flooring it out. Then I'll tell you the result in the final conclusion. Oh, by the way, once more to show you. So cool to have the rear axle steering. It makes the car so agile and that's why big SUV, big power, but still fun to steer. That's something very remarkable. And now to our conclusion for today with the Volkswagen Touareg here as V8 diesel, also the R-Line and this special edition. Well, last one first, the special edition with the darkened headlamps and so on and some nice accentuations here and there. Why not? It is indeed something unique. However, only animal skin on the inside. That's also the case then for the V8 models. They need to improve that because also people who pay a lot of money for cars also care about animals actually. Other than that, the build quality is really high on the interior and you have a lot of space. This interior is so very well usable. Not completely a fan of this rather complicated infotainment unit, however. I would rather pick this more simple one because it just has everything you need and keeps things more simple indeed. But usually some packages are then connected and so on and then you're not so free in your choice. Yeah, that's quite often what they actually do. But overall, I really like the styling, both exterior and interior, and it's a very elegant vehicle. It's not doing things over the top. It's, of course, not cheap at all, especially not with the V8. But if you compare it to other premium SUVs, the Touareg is still a little bit lower in the price. And that's also what makes it very interesting, especially in a vehicle for towing purposes. Also with the V8, if you really need more power, yeah, it gives you a serious punch, definitely, especially on the motorway. But, however, if you keep it rather low profile, you can score almost equal consumption figures as with the smaller diesel. Here we could really also reach 8.5 liters per kilometer, so like 28 mpg US or 34 mpg UK. That's, of course, the minimum consumption. We also had some faster autobahn parts earlier, where we then also had rather, you know, the higher consumption. And if you drive even faster, it goes up, of course. But I think overall quite happy with that. It's also giving you a very calm feeling when you keep it in low RPMs because you have this big displacement. That's also what's making it interesting. So I think a very special edition here today for the Touareg and also with beautiful lighting for this video. Hope you enjoyed our insight. Please also tune in to other Volkswagen Touareg reviews. I can promise to you they are also very, very interesting. Different episodes, different focuses we had in, in these. And of course, always join for some competitors. Use the YouTube search Autogefühl Audi Q8 or something in the YouTube search and you'll find all of these reviews. Thank you so much for tuning in today. See you next time.